If you're looking for a solution to compress your videos, I've got a great app that's easy and free that'll do it for you. Today we're going over Handbrake and there's a link down below in the description of the video. Coming up next on Tech Talk America. All right, folks, I want to take two seconds just to show you real quickly how to install this file. A lot of you may already know how to do it, but just in case. So when you download the link that I have for you in the description of the video, you're going to get a file known as a DMG file. Here it is right here. You'll see it's in your downloads folder. It's called Handbrake. And what we're going to do from here is we're just going to simply double click on it to open it up. Now, when you install software through this method, what you basically have to do is, let's just move this window over here. You're gonna take this icon, you can see it looks like a cocktail with a pineapple next to it, and we're gonna drag it and drop it from here into your applications folder. Now, once you've done that, it's all installed. You don't need the DMG file, so at that point, you can trash this file. Now, let's go into the actual software. Now, as you will see here, when you open up Handbrake, it's going to immediately bring you to a file browser, which is just asking you where is the video file that we're going to be shrinking. Now, there's two different ways that you could theoretically do this. You could point it towards the actual file, but I know for quite a few of you out there, it might be a video file that you have on a DVD. So at this point, you would, of course, need to hook up that DVD to your Mac. And I would like to just briefly say, I realize, of course, that all of the current new Macs that come out don't have a DVD player, which by the way, the technical name for that is an optical drive. Uh, if you need a third party optical drive that you can just simply plug into your Mac in order to be able to do this, I'll give you links to a couple of them down in the description of the video. The prices have really come down in the last few years. The one other thing that you need to know is, let's say for example, you're on one of the newer MacBook Pros that has USB type C, of course, you would end up needing an adapter in order to get USB 3.0, since that's the connection of all of these that I'm going to be recommending to you. So from here, point it towards whatever file it is that you're going to be shrinking. In this case, I'm going to be shrinking this file that I made for a client of mine. This is actually a museum. And as you'll see here, this video file was shot in 4K, so it's a very, very large file. And even though the video is only about two to three minutes, as you'll see here, it's over seven gigabytes in size. So the reason why I might want to shrink this is maybe I want to keep a mobile version of this video on my phone. My phone has a copy of most of my work, so it's basically a portable portfolio. If I need to show someone what I can do as a video editor, as a filmmaker, I've got a shortened, you know, shrunk version of all of my stuff on my phone so I can show someone at any time. So what we're going to do is we're going to click open and it's going to load that file. Now, if you're doing a DVD at this point, what you may need to do, there may be one additional step. If you look up here where it says title, okay, if you look at the length, in this case, I already mentioned this video is only a little less than three minutes long. If you're loading a DVD, sometimes uh, if you click in here, you'll see that there are multiple title options. You're just going to look for whichever one is the longest or whichever one ultimately points to your file. Then from there, you'll see we have a ton of different options that are here, but what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna keep this video short and sweet, and I wanna show you the exact settings that I use to shrink my videos. So while we could go through all these different options here, talk about formatting, the one that I find makes by far the biggest difference is right here under video. So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just focus here where it says constant quality. And if you imagine this line right here as a scale of zero on the left to 100 on the right, what I tend to do is point this towards right around 75%. The other thing that you might want to consider doing is if your video file is in fact in 4K, you can bring it down to 1080p and it's going to still look pretty darn good. So if you look over here on presets, I've already got it set to 1080p 30. So what that means is it's 1080, 1080 is the resolution, 30 is the amount of frames per second. Okay. If you go here under general, you'll see that's where that is listed. Now, from here, there's only really two more steps. All we need to do is tell it where to save the file, and if we're gonna rename it, we can do that at the same time. So you can see I've just called it HD, and point it towards where you want it to save. By default, I seem to remember that it points it towards the movies folder in your home folder, which a lot of people don't use. So you might wanna consider changing that to something like the desktop or Dropbox or wherever it is you're gonna end up saving it. 
when you're done, all you're going to do is hit the little start button up here at the top. Now, at this point, it's going to go through and it's going to start to process. And you're going to hear your fans rip it and roar, okay? They're going to really take off if you have any other applications running on your Mac at that point. My advice is to quit out of them so that it can really focus on that process. Depending on how long your video is, depending on the end settings that you put, it's going to take a long time. This is not something that takes place in seconds. So when you're done, uh, you'll see your file appear, of course, wherever it is you tell it to save. In my case, I've already done this in order to save time and check this out. So the original file size that we had was seven gigabytes. The final size after using the software is 180 megabytes. And I've already looked at the video quality. It does look uh, pretty darn spectacular. Again, for something like on a phone, you're not going to really be able to tell the giant difference between 1080p and 4K. So that's Handbrake. Again, it's a free piece of software. It's really easy to use, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, I do appreciate it if you hit that little like button, and I'll see you next time. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.